Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to show you two programs that I'm working on in C++ in Ubuntu Linux. Okay, so um, let me show you uh, what we're planning to do. Uh, no different than the course that I've been rambling on about from UC Davis regarding their futures and options trading course. What I want to show you are um, two programs that I've got right now written and uh, what they are is this is the CME book that I mentioned in a previous video just regarding a very self simple I guess guided course on learning options trading and um, futures trading so I'm going through cha each chapter writing an implementation of the mechanics for each of these type of examples uh, in my case right now uh, I've got chapter I believe this is chapter 2 and what we got here is I'm going to show you some examples two separate programs the first one is to explain the basis and the short hedger and the other one is uh, regarding basis and the long hedger now, I'm not going to get into the explanation of what this all means you can read all this document PDF stuff in, in, in the PDF. I've given the links, I'll put them in the blog so you know where to go. Uh, so let me just give you uh, an example here. So there's a couple examples in each of these sections here, basis and the short hedger. So what I'm going to show you is not exactly uh, rocket science. It's very, very dumb and easy uh, it, on purpose as well. That's why I'm learning this, just to show everybody that's kind of new at all this, that uh, it is quite possible to really get into hedging with uh, short and longs, no matter which side of the market you're on. And uh, I just want to show you the C++ implementation of it. It's very basic, but um, you can build from this. As you'll see through this PDF and other examples, the more um, uh, sophisticated type of strategy you, you can work on and build upon these very simple examples that I want to show in this code. So basically uh, I've shown this uh, type of code in other examples but essentially what we got here is we've got an example of um, this one's in my C line it's called CME short hedge. Okay so what we got here is I've gone through this before two different types of inputs one for a double and one for a uh, input of a text, or sorry, an integer. So we have our double, uh, we just do a normal get line, and then um, we retrieve and convert from a string into a double, and same with the integer. In this case, if I'm doing an input on a double, you have to put in point zero point whatever, so this um, input can differentiate between that and an integer. Um, otherwise it doesn't convert properly so I just do that as a distinction okay so back to our example oh, let me just um, go through our main function so all we do really is we're just going to input the cash unit of the contract one so March and June so this would be kind of like contract one and then this would be contract two so each one would have a component of contract one would have a cash and then the futures and we calculate the basis and we do the same thing with contract two, the cash and the futures component. So essentially with the basis you can see there's just a different difference between these two, these two, and then we have a change in the cash market and a change in the futures market. From there we can do a sell on this price plus or minus for the net gain as well as I'll give us our net selling price. It's so basic and easy so that's really all I'm doing in this example. Um, and I'm going to show you some examples to show you to run, you know, uh, nothing earth shattering as I said. Okay, so let's do our first um, example here. Uh, okay, so here's our first input. So we've got to go 6.15 on the cash one. And what you'll notice here is everything's broken down to simplistic, or how much is our cost per unit. So this could be per bushel per ton or whatever but in this case we're just 
dollar amount per unit. We do that in each each one of these um, queries. So we got six fifty contract two cash components five sixty five, and then we've got our our future on the contract two, and then it goes off and calculates all that fun stuff. So we get our change in cash fifty cents. Uh, change in futures negative 50 um, and then we get our uh, our uh, basis of 35 cents or negative negative basis 35 cents in the second contract buy cash position at 565 and then our gain loss on the futures position as well brings us to the 615, which is exactly what we want. So let's go to the next example. You know, this is like real dick easy stuff. So, um, like I said, I'm going to let you read the advantages of, of the importance of the basis as it changes and how it impacts the final net selling price. But I'll just do this last example and then run the, the long version of it. Okay, so let's run the next one. We'll do, just do this one. Okay, um, so we got 615, and then next one 650. Second cash price is 560, and then six dollars for the future on the second contract. And you'll see our calculation seems to work okay. Cash 55 cents. Change in the futures, 50 cents. It looks like it's backwards for some reason, but uh, well, we, we can figure that out. Negative 35 on the basis, June, negative 40, buy cash, 560, gain on the futures. So I got this backwards, but just want to show you that it sort of kind of kind of works, but we got our gain on the on our net selling price. Okay, so that's that one. So let's do our next one, which is the CME long on the hedge. Um, open project. Okay, so are we got our long? Yes, we have our long. Okay, so let's do our long one on this one. This example here, so we'll run it. Uh, cash price three hundred seventy dollars per ton. Next one's at three fifty for the futures in the first contract. Uh, Four hundred for cash. Oh, you know what? I know where my problem is. Three eighty. Yeah. Ah ha ha ha, that's the problem. Remember I told you you gotta put point O oh, point whatever? This is what happens, it just messes up the calculation. So let me rerun that. Okay, so we got a 370.0. Okay, that's just to say it's a double. Futures at 350.0. Contract one, uh, 400 at 400.0. Future second contract, 380.0. Okay, let's see if we got everything run here. Changing cash, 30 ton loss, 30 gain, uh, basis at 20. The contract 20 for the next basis on contract two. Buy price at 400. Gain or loss on the future position of 30. So we're at uh, 370. Okay, um, that seems to work. So let's just do one more example. Uh, and uh, we'll call it a day in this video. Okay, so um, as I said, it's not earth shattering as you can tell, not rocket science here, but for those that are really, really, really new to all this, this should help them out. 440.0, 400.0, 400 uh, and then we get, uh, well, we 
we've got their net price at 390. But uh, our change of uh, let's see, change in futures at 50. That's a second contract. Change in cash, 70 ton loss. It's correct. Basis 20. Basis of 40. 440. Uh, second contract at 50 plus 390. Okay, so hopefully that will work or at least satisfy those that may find this sort of useful but uh, let me know and uh, I'll put this code in for all my Quant Leap members and uh, next video we'll move on to the next chapter where it involves um, we're not going to do the historical data uh, basis quite yet let me just show you what, what, what further we got this involves a database this is important I'm probably going to do this in MySQL uh, to track uh, probably the daily because I'll have to it's a, not a huge deal but I have to include the plugin for uh, grabbing IKEA feed through um, the wine project because uh, it's a Windows based program because obviously we're here on Linux um, and then let's see what else we got hedging strategies uh, and there's some risk management here so more of these type of examples and then further down the line we go, uh, but I'm sure you can figure out this PDF. It, it includes options, uh, and then you can break it down by strategy and all that. Now, this is just the first um, phase. Then we have to build another part that will basically make trading decisions around what's happening in the bases and other factors as well. So this is a good project to or good PDF to, to re, uh, make reference for for these type of basic um, options and features type of basic system but it's as I said it's good enough so this is what we use and as I said for the UC Davis this will cover off a lot of the course um, so we just have to attack the parts that are not um, included in this document and then I think over time you'll start to see a basic basic um, automated trading system come together specifically for features and options and then be able to plug in using level 2 data analysis be able to maybe develop some kind of basic strategy or algorithm combining all these all these uh, uh, trading decisions and rules and be able to maybe uh, feed in different types of uh, commodities and have them theoretically trade uh, based upon what it sees, but in this case, really the data that will be would be used is end of day data. But who knows? If I experiment enough with it, maybe there could be some uh, higher, uh, faster frequencies uh, opportunities out there. Just really playing with the data once we get to that point. But that's the direction because this will cover off a lot, and there's going to be other factors as well as when it comes to the Greeks for options analysis for probability. And also implementing like a look at black shoals to be able to dynamically calculate the premium, what the premium should be calculated as if you do decide to take on an option. All right, hopefully this will help you out, and I'll uh, talk to you later. More videos to come based around this stuff later.